Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this webinar. Um, and as this month is Women's History Month, we'll be focusing this webinar on women in medicine, especially here at AUC. Um, so I'm really excited to have everyone join us. We're going to have a portion towards the end of this webinar where um, you'll be able to get some of your questions answered. So throughout this presentation, please feel free to go ahead and start entering any questions you have into the chat box. Um, and so to kick us off with some formal introductions, my name is Felicia Frazier. I'm an assistant director of admission here at AUC. Um, the assistant director role, basically I assist students through the admissions journey and process all the way up and through enrollment. And joining me today is my fellow colleague, Jimena Aloha. Jimena, would you like to come off mute and say hi and greet everyone? Yes, hello everybody. Um, my name is Jimena Ojoa, also an assistant director of admissions at AUC, and I work with students in the Mid-Atlantic region. I'm very excited about this webinar today. And uh, we have incredible panelists, um, current students, as well as um, IUC graduates that we're excited to introduce you today. Awesome. And um, so as Jimena said, we do have a student panel joining us. And as you can see, um, we have a range of students that will be joining us on this panel, um, some in our fifth and final semester of medical sciences. We have a third semester student joining us as well. And then we also have a student that's moving through clinical science rotations. So you'll get to hear a little bit about that experience. And then also joining us, we have some alumni, as Jimena mentioned. We have Dr. Paredes on. Uh, she'll be sharing a little bit about her experience at AUC as well as where she currently is um, following residency. And then additionally, we also have Dr. Imamian joining us today as well, all the way from California. Um, she'll share a little bit about her journey as well as her fellowship which we're really excited to hear about as we've been informed by our alumni, um, head of alumni, that she's actually um, in a very competitive fellowship. She's the first foreign international medical graduate to be welcomed into that fellowship program. So we're really excited to hear about that as well. Uh, but we'll first start off by learning a little bit about AUC and you know why we're all here today. We wanna to talk about and celebrate women in medicine. So as you can see here in 2021, more than a third of the active physician workforce in the United States is made up of females. Um, the percentages you can see right there of females in the 48 top specialties range from high and low, um, pediatrics to orthopedic surgery. And in 2021, 47.3% of residents and fellows in ACGME accredited programs were female. Um, and then again, you can see those percentages um, for females in the 48 largest specialties. Um, and then I'm happy to share that women make up nearly 50% of the student body population here at AUC. So we're really excited to dive into all of that today. Um, but firstly, some of you guys may be asking, why AUC? Um, so some things you should definitely know is that we offer a US modeled curriculum that will prepare you for taking the United States medical licensing examinations, which then allows you to go ahead and practice back in the US. Um, we offer a collaborative approach to education taught by some of our expert faculty. Um, we also provide the opportunity to serve and give back in the local and global communities. We have a global network of alumni that's always growing every single year. And then we also have strong residency attainment rates following completing our program. And to talk a little bit more about residency, I'm gonna kick it on over to Jimena. Yes, thank you, Felicia. So let's talk about residency attainment. One of our highest priorities here at AUC is obviously preparing our students to attain a medical school residency placement. And each year, we, our graduates actually apply and obtain residencies in a variety of programs throughout the US and Canada. For the years of 2021 through 2022, our graduates obtained a 96 first time residency, residency attainment rate. That is 280 residency placements in 20 different specialties. So, those stats really speak about the quality of our medical school education program, and obviously to its recognition by residency program directors. So highly competitive specialties. Um, our graduates continue to secure obviously residency placement in all specialties, including highly competitive ones. As you can see on the slide, these are some of the competitive specialties our graduates secured in 2022. So anesthesiology, emergency medicine, radiology, OBGYN, and general surgery as well. 
And um, if you like to, if you like to know more information on where, uh, where and which specialties our students were placed in, I encourage you, I encourage you to check our website. Um, and you can get more details on the placements over the past few years. Um, student achievements. So as some of you already know, the USMLE Step 1 is one of the most important factors that residency programs in the U.S. consider when evaluating um, applicants. And so AUC's first time pass rate for the USMLE Step 1 was actually 92%, 92.4, I'm sorry, from 2017 to 2021. And our numbers continue to increase over time, which is a great indicator of how well we prepare our students and the quality education that we offer at AUC School of Medicine. Okay, and then some of you may be thinking, you know, how is AUC going to prepare me to treat a wide variety of patients across the globe even? Um, so we are internationally recognized and we are an accredited institution. So AUC is accredited through the Accreditation Commission on Colleges of Medicine, which is the accrediting body um, used in the country of St. Martin, which is where our flagship campus is located. Um, so this means that not only can you practice in the U.S., you can practice outside of the United States. Um, students that graduate from our program are able to have their degree internationally recognized by the UK's General Medical Council, the Medical Council of India, as well as the Australian Medical Council. And so I did mention, um, you know, talking about St. Martin and our flagship campus, I want to bounce back over to Jimena to talk a little bit about our degree program and that we have two different enrollment tracks. Yes, one degree, two different tracks. So students who are U.S. citizens or residents will be studying at our campus in St. Martin, where they will complete their first two years of medical sciences. And the U.K. track is available for eligible non-U.S. citizens, and these, are, these students will complete their first two years of medical sciences at our U.K. program site via our partnership with the University of Central Lancashire, located in Preston, England. Pathway to success. So this uh, slide just summarizes a brief timeline of our four-year MD curriculum, which consists of a total of 10 semesters. Semesters one through five of medical sciences are taught at our San Martin campus. And semesters six through 10 are the clinical sciences, where students will do their clinical rotations at hospitals affiliated with AUC. And as you can also see, the USMLE step one exam happens after students complete their first two years of medical sciences and the USMLE Step 2 takes place after the clinical sciences portion. Okay, our uh, campus facilities. So our campus in St. Martin offers technologically advanced facilities. Our students have the opportunity to access a fully equipped anatomy lab, simulation center, applied research lab, and other tools that combine classroom study with practical applications of medicine. Additionally, students that attend our St. Martin campus also have access to a fully equipped cadaver lab featuring medical imaging. Okay, our faculty. Um, expert faculty and personalized approach. Um, our educational model is built on collaborative learning environment and personalized approach as well. So we do this by welcoming small class sizes and offering easy access to expert faculty. The faculty to student ratio is one to six, which just adds more uh, of that personalized experience. Um, and additionally, our students get to learn from knowledgeable and dedicated faculty members that hold an MD and or PhD degrees and have primarily trained in the U.S. and the U.K. Okay, our teaching hospitals. As we previously mentioned in the timeline, during semester six through 10, you will be completing your clinical sciences at one of our 23 teaching hospitals in the U.S. and the U.K. You can complete all of your rotations in one location, or you can also mix it up and get experiences in different hospitals in different states or both the U.S. and the U.K. We have an incredible clinical team who is willing to work with you and help you identify your preference of where you would like to be. Okay, Global Health Electives, this is my favorite. Through our clinical affiliations with Danbury Hospital, AEC students have the opportunity to complete a six-week clinical rotation in one of these six countries. 
uh, Vietnam, Mexico, the uh, Dominican Republic, Uganda, Thailand, and Zimbabwe. And so this unique global elective exposes our students to healthcare systems that are different from what they're used to and gives them a deeper uh, understanding of how healthcare works in a global sense. Um, these are once in a lifetime opportunities that broaden our students' horizons and also help shape their medical careers in the future. In our alumni legacy, we have over 7,500 alumni from 78 countries across the globe. And as you can see on this map, AUC graduates are pretty much all over the US. The dark blue and light blue colors show the states where a majority of them practice. More than 57% of our graduates work in the primary care sector. And currently our graduates are practicing in 883 counties in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. So needless to say, our graduates are accomplished physicians, leaders in the community and researchers, and they help really influence not only um, the healthcare in a local uh, level, but also on a global level as well. Very exciting. So many of you guys are taking in all this information and thinking, okay, so I know about the program now, I know about the curriculum, but what, have, what is it like being on campus? Um, so to dive into that, one of the great aspects of our program is that we work to drive education through partnerships and community service. So this happens both inside and outside the classroom. Uh, my personal favorite is we have Community Action Day. This takes place each semester, one day where we completely dedicate to the local communities. And you can see more of those different opportunities right on your screen of ways in which any of you that feel that call to action or really deeply embedded in community service, just know that that's definitely fostered when you attend here at AUC as well. And then to further that, we also have different student organizations and interest groups and clubs on campus. Um, a lot of them are specialty related. So for anybody that wants to delve a little bit deeper into the specialty you're looking to further your career in, you have that ability to do so. Um, and then of course, with it being again, Women's History Month, um, I definitely want to point out one of the student clubs we have on campus is our American Medical Women's Association that students can participate in. And again, these are great ways to get involved, um, not only throughout you with your peers in the community, but it's also great ways in which you can learn new opportunities and definitely build up on your resume for when it comes time to applying for a residency match. And then one of the key things that we want to talk about before we fully conclude our presentation is that we here at AUC offer first semester tuition back guarantee. Um, so with that being said, we understand that a lot of students embarking on a medical journey can be a little bit scary, maybe you're a little hesitant, or maybe you have a little bit of self-doubt. Is this the right path for me? We'll just know that AUC is very confident in our curriculum and that we are setting you up for success. So this pretty much acts as a safety net as you move through your first semester. And that essentially, if you're not successful in your first semester to advance to your second semester, you receive a full refund of your paid tuition back. Um, so again, it's a safety net for those students. It allows those students to build up that confidence as they're moving through the program. And again, to be successful all the way to that finish line, graduating and of course, obtaining a residency match position. And then to conclude, we do want to go ahead and share with you guys that we have rolling admission here at AUC. We have three different entry points each year. They're January, May, and September. The next available class that students can go ahead and submit applications for is for the May term of 2023. So for any of you following this webinar today are super excited, you can't wait to get started, you're welcome to go ahead and submit an application. Um, the last day to apply for our upcoming May term is on April 17th. Um, so we do have a little bit of time, but definitely don't wait to get that application in. And then of course we have applications currently open for September of this year, as well as January of next year. And that concludes the admissions presentation section of this webinar. And I'm gonna bounce it back on over to Jimena, who's going to kick us off with going ahead and introducing the student panel as well as the alumni that are joining us and go ahead and try to get a lot of those questions you guys are submitting answered. Thank you, Felicia. So why don't we go ahead and start introducing our student panel. Um, why don't we start with Dr. Ingrid Paredes. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Um, where are you currently practicing? Um, anything, a fun fact they wanna share about yourself? You can, oh, we can, hear me can you hear me? 
Yes, now yes, we can. we can hear you. And you meant to introduce everybody, right? I know you mentioned the student panel. You wanted to introduce everybody first, right? I just wasn't well, we, sure if you were going to do any students or not. Oh, okay. we can start with you, yeah. Okay. All right, so my name is Ingrid Paredes. I'm an OBGYN physician. I went to AUC. Um, oh my goodness, I can't believe it's been that long. I actually started in May of 2008. Yeah, because if I graduated in 2011, yeah, I started in 2008. Can't believe it's been that long. But yeah, I started in May. I did the 20 months in the island, and then I did my third year in um, London. So I did do the track of going to the UK as a Cuban. Being able to travel outside of the United States was like, oh, sure, by all means, I'm doing that. So I did that for a whole year. I did my entire third year there in the UK. And then my fourth year, I did it in the States. I went into OBGYN residency at St. Luke University Hospital in Pennsylvania. I did four years there for the residency, and then I stayed practicing there because my husband was also an AUC grad. Um, also, you know, we met in college, so we went together to AUC, and then he chose general surgery and then went on to have a fellowship, and it just, his training took way longer, so I became the sugar mama for a little bit while she was still uh, a resident. So uh, I practiced there in Pennsylvania, and, and finally, four years ago, I was able to move down here to Miami where, you know, I feel like I'm back home. I was, you know, I was born and raised in Cuba, came here to do high school, and then I left for college, medical school, but always with a plan to come back to Miami. So I am very happy now in a private practice uh, where there's four of us. We do, I do obstetrics, gynecology, you know, everything that is involved, delivering babies, doing surgeries, seeing well women. I'm very happy, and the most important is that I have been able to stay in touch with my AUC ever since I matched into residency. Um, and then since then, I've been doing these webinars I've been doing, and it's so fascinating, this social opportunity, because every time I see a presentation, I feel like, oh my gosh, she's gotten so much better, and every year it just gets better and better. I'm like, that anatomy lab, my gosh, compared to what I had, to what they have, it made me want to go back again <laughs> and do TA again. Um, so it's just amazing. I love AUC. When I did my white coat ceremony uh, speaker, like I did the speech, I remember that I came up when I was doing the presentation. Uh, I came up with the what AUC stands for in my mind. I made it up, of course, and I said that AUC, all of you have a chance. And I felt like that ever since. That's how I feel that AUC uh, did for me and can potentially do for anybody. Um, all of you have a chance to succeed and become a doctor and do your dream. I always want to be a doctor. And of course, I ended up going to AUC because I didn't get accepted in the States. And I feel like it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I'm going to stop talking. I don't know how much I was supposed to talk, <laughs> but I'm sure we're going to have more opportunity for questions. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Perez. I love your introduction and what you consider AUC to stand for. I love that. Okay, why don't we go ahead and introduce now Dr. Anna Mamian. Share us, tell us a little bit about yourself and what are you currently doing? What are your practice? Yeah, so um, I love the, the you chance thing. I think that is so true. Um, all of you have a chance is really great. Um, so I'm Anna. I'm originally from the Los Angeles area um, where I stayed for undergrad and went to USC, did a health promotion and disease promotion, which is like the equivalent of public health with a fancier title. I and then I took about two years while I was debating about whether I wanted to go to medical school um, or pursue public health in more of like a PhD level. Um, finally decided I did want to go to medical school. Very happy with that decision um, looking back. But I went to AUC. I had a friend um, who was there. I was debating honestly between um, going to SGU versus Ross at the time, but I had a really good friend who was at AUC. Um, and she convinced me that, you know, all the worries that I had about island living would be okay if I went to St. Martin. 
Um, and that was very much true for me. So I was very happy with my experience there. I loved it. Um, I have now recommended it to so many of my family friends um, and other friends that I have as well. I did my clinical rotations in New York and then back in California. Um, being from California, I really wanted to match back in my home state. And so um, I did a few visiting rotations at the hospital where I ended up doing residency, which is Valley Children's. Um, loved my training so much that I'm there for a chief year right now. Um, and, you know, very happy to have gone into pediatrics. This past year, I applied for a fellowship. So um, I am going into pediatric hospital medicine at UC San Diego. So very excited to be going back to Southern California as well. Um, and yeah, just excited to be here and talk about my experience. I think um, I was very worried about going to a Caribbean school to be completely honest. And so I love talking to people about it because I think I had such a good experience. And I feel like where I'm at right now um, is very much the same place, if not better than where I would have wanted to be if I went a different route. So yeah, that's a little bit about my experience. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. And we have lots of questions for you both. Um, now we wanna introduce our amazing student panel. We have a few students on here. Um, so I'm going to start with the first one that's online is Jessica, since you're the first picture that pops up. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where are you currently at and what semester are you in? Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Jehoda. I am currently a third year medical student in my second course. I just found out I passed my shelf from last week from PEDS, so I'm happy. Um, I am in Miami doing my rotation because that's where I'm originally from, like Dr. Paredes. I, I want to end up down here. This is the, the end goal. I was born and raised here. I went to undergraduate at Nova Southeastern University. And my husband is also in school with me. And we have a very similar story where we were best friends in undergrad and then got married in med school. So very ironic. Um, and I want to specialize in emergency medicine. I'm currently working in the ER, which is why I'm in my scrubs. I, I work in a few hours down in Miami. So I'm looking forward to answering all your questions that you guys have today. and um, I'll pass it on to Mallory. Hi everyone, my name is Mallory Heidinger. I'm originally from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Um, current fifth semester, just took comp, so that's a big load off. Um, but I did my bachelor's degree at Slippery Rock University prior to coming to AUC and then a master's in public health at Penn State College of Medicine and a master's in biomedical sciences at Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, I have a similar story. It must be the day of couples. I'm here with my significant other. We met in, in grad school and have done the whole process together. So um, just waiting to see where our next steps take us and hopefully to the New York area. We're trying to get back to, to Pennsylvania, but we'll see. So looking forward to any questions you guys might have. Thank you. Oh, and I'll pass to Abigail. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Abigail Moberg. I am also a fifth semester medical student here on the island, um, getting ready, hopefully, to go to the U.S. and take a step and start residency or uh, start clinicals. Excuse me. I'm a few years away from residency. Um, I am from Western North Dakota. I went to Dickinson State University for my undergraduate degree, and I did start at AUC right after graduating. So. I am still uh, very much strong kicking on the education thing. I'm very excited, hoping to be a general pediatrician one day. No significant other on the island for me though. So uh, I am willing and able to go anywhere and I'm excited for the opportunities that AUC has in store for me. So hopefully I can answer some questions. And uh, I'll pass to Shelby. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby Hamilton. I'm a fifth semester student as well. I am doing the UK track, so I'm in the UK currently. And I, I also um, just sat my comp. I'm continuing my studying for step one as well. I'm from Belize, um, but I'm hoping to practice in the US after graduation. And I'm also looking at doing some of my course here in the UK and then going into going to the US for the rest of my clinicals. I'm 
interested in OBGYN. I'm actually the um, president of the OBGYN um, interest group in the UK. I've also had some um, talks with Dr. Paredes as well. So I've had a couple of conversations with her as well. Now I'll pass it on to Alexis. Hi guys, my name's Alexis. I'm a current third semester on the St. Martin campus. I apologize for being late. I thought this was at six. <laughs> um, but I am originally from Pennsylvania. Um, I went to Swarthmore College where I got a dual major in biology and religion. Um, I'm really looking into going into emergency medicine most likely. Um, I did EMS for a couple years before this. And right now I'm involved in a lot of clubs and stuff on campus, including like being vice president of emergency medicine and disaster medicine and some other things. But yeah, I'm excited to be here today. All right, well, thank you so much for all those amazing introductions. I didn't see uh, any question popping up yet, but I do get a question all the time. So this one could be for either Dr. Paredes or Dr. Mamian. And the question is, what were you worried about matching into the residency of your choice? So maybe no, Dr. Sorry, Paredes. Okay, I'll start. I guess I'm the next one on the screen. Um, yeah, I think that if I say no, I will be lying or I have amnesia from when I a while ago that I went through the process. But yes, I feel like that's a worry that I think everybody has. And I feel like when I went into the Caribbean, that was one of my fears that just being foreign grad, it was just inherent worry that you have just going to um, a foreign grad, you know, being a foreign grad, going to a, I, I'm an, is the FMG grad, you know, like I knew that difference. And because of that, either I knew because of what people told me, um, yes, that was always a fear. And I did not go into AUC with, with the thought of, well, out of all the schools, this one sounds to be to have the highest pass rate because I had no idea. When I applied to AUC, I just applied because I was very, you know, sad that oh my gosh no medical school what happened to my dream i want to be a doctor and then i happened to learn about uc and i stopped there i just applied i i actually took the mcat again because my husband had a better score and then he could start before me i'm like oh no wait i need to take it you know whatever we're gonna be a part and i ended up taking it again and then we ended up just starting together because he delayed and waited for me so we started in may um but yeah we both went with that fear of yeah matching and then of course i didn't know what i wanted to do i i don't know if i knowing knowing then or if i knew then that i was going to do an obgyn probably i would have more fear just because any surgical specialty carries the inherent like oh it's competitive so it's really hard to get into it and then i feel like i'm glad i didn't know and then regarding the passing rate for the steps um i didn't know but i felt that after I went to the island and I had the preparation I had when I went to the clinical rotation, especially back to the US, I felt like I knew so much compared to my friends. Like they were like, oh, we didn't learn that. I guess they have different like learning experience, but I felt like I feel like AUC prefers you because of that inherent stigma of you know the matching. They prefer you to take the steps. And yes, you do need to study a lot. Like I did so many prep, you know, practice questions. I read that first day, I don't know how many times, but I think, and if I were to give an advice to students, don't go with that stress, even though you do have that inherent stress of just being a foreign grad, just go with the confidence that they will prepare you. Definitely do your part of studying and work hard and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I had I had no problem. I mean, I matched into my, not my first choice because I did couples match. So it's different. Couples match is different. So we didn't match as a couple. So our first year we were apart. But that's a totally different. Like I don't want I don't want to scare anybody doing the couples match. But it was really hard. He wanted neurosurgery and I wanted OBGYN as a couple, really from a not from AC from a foreign grad period. That was really hard. But we tried. And I ended up matching into my first one, not you know, couple. And then eventually he came to Pennsylvania and we we finished our journey and we made I think that at the end, what matters is getting where you want. It doesn't matter how you get there, but you will get to where you want through AUC. I, I, I have confidence that you will match in the desired specialty, I think. 
Thank you, Dr. Perez. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Mamian? Yeah, I think um, I was very nervous about it as well. I think everybody is, like you mentioned. Um, I think that's super normal. I applied to two specialties and then I felt like I had enough interviews within pediatrics that I didn't even go to any of the interviews for the other specialty. Um, so I think overall, I was very pleasantly surprised by that. Um, and yeah, I mean, for the most part, all of my friends matched um, my year as we all got very lucky in that regard. But I think um, going and showing up to your rotations and really working hard goes a long way and people notice. And my best advice for actually matching what you want and where you want is to do um, an away rotation. That is truly my best advice and I think was um, what got me my residency position. That's such good advice. Thank you, Dr. Mamian. We have another question, sort of similar, but maybe um, you can answer it, uh, Ms. Dr. Mamian. It's, um, how did you navigate conversations surrounding people asking about fears of getting into residency coming from a Caribbean school? So how did you navigate those conversations? I think, um, is this specific more to like interviews or um, in general? Residency, like going into residency. Oh, in re going into residency, like from, sorry, I just wanna make sure I'm understanding the question correctly. Um, from like once I was in residency or when I was going into residency? Prior to getting in, like matching into residency. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think a, a big component, just like what I said before, is um, making sure you really try to stand out on your clinical rotations, because I really do think that goes a long way in your letters of recommendation um, and the connections that you make uh, along your clinical journey are very important. Um, and so I would say, you know, just work hard, try to stand out. Um, sign up for extra work. I would go in on the weekends like all the time and I did like night shifts and stuff like that. I would ask for extra opportunities a lot as a medical student because you just want to do what you can to kind of stand out. Um, and I think that helped calm my nerves. I was again like I rotated at the hospital where I ended up matching so I was very lucky in having that opportunity. Um, and so they gave me a lot of positive feedback that made it sound um, like I would possibly <laughs> likely match here. So I think that was really helpful. Thank you for that, Dr. Mami. And so now this question is for one of our current students, so maybe um, Mallory or Abigail can answer this one. What is your current involvement in on campus? I'm sorry, what are you involved in? So we can start with Mallory. Okay. Um... I, I do a lot on campus, probably too much, um, but right now I'm currently the head TA of our cardiac simulation center, so it's our Harvey lab. Um, we have a lot of simulation activities available for students. We have our cardiac lab, and then we also have an ultrasound lab. I'm a TA for that as well. Um, I course tutor, and I'm a histology TA. Um, I am a member of our Phi Chi organization, so it's a an international um, male female medical fraternity in with the primary um, goal of service within the community so we are our motto is first to serve um, but it's also a really great opportunity for students to collaborate across semesters sometimes you become a little siloed within your semester and Phi Chi has been an amazing almost a social opportunity while com completing service um, so i've really enjoyed that um, i'm a member of our current community engagement course cohort. Um, so our community engagement course is a two semester elective course that takes on a research project uh, within the community of St. Martin. Um, my cohort was able to complete a disaster assessment with our disaster medicine um, branch. And then we worked with a team of Harvard physicians to just um, come up with new hurricane shelter guidelines in the event of a natural disaster. So that's a great um, community based research opportunity. Um, I mentor on campus and, and I think that's it actually. So it's Abigail. Abigail is also very active. So the long laundry list of things. Yes, like Mallory said, we overlap a little bit in some of what we do. Um, I am also one of the head anatomy TAs. So like Dr. Paredes was talking about with our anatomy lab facility, I have to say it is 
top tier. I'm definitely a big fan. I spend a lot of time with the cadavers. Um, just, it's a really, really great um, opportunity that we have here at AUC, especially compared to some other Caribbean schools that don't have um, that live or uh, in-person experience. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I was pretty involved with the pediatric interest group, um, doing a lot with volunteerism there. I'm also a part of the online research club. Uh, so that is something you can join as soon as you come to the island and it does extend into clinicals. Um, there are some online connections that you can make to be involved with different research opportunities throughout clinicals, um, being part of uh, different studies and helping to write case reports and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm also a course tutor. In addition, I also peer tutor. Um, and oh, Ma Mallory and I are both part of the Honor and Service Society uh, as of this semester. So I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but definitely lots of things that you can be a part of. And I think uh, Mallory would probably agree with me. I think that being involved only makes your experience here better. Taking advantage of all of the opportunities, not only to put on an application, potentially have something to talk about, but just simply getting to know people, getting to know the island, um, having some really great experiences there, just have made me a more rounded student, I think, so. Amazing, thank you. I mean, you I guys know. have so much when you want to study. That's amazing, <laughs> hearing you, and I just, if I'm allowed to talk, I know, you need to stop me if I need to talk, if I need to stop, but I'm just fascinated and I wanted to share how much I love to hear, not only from the students, from, from you, Dr. Uh, Emanuel, how do you say your name? I'm so proud of, you know, the fact that you match into this fellowship that is so hard to match into. It's like, it's so amazing. It makes me feel so like, oh my gosh, I want to go and hug you guys and congratulate you and you're representing the school so well and oh my gosh so many activities I feel bad I was not involved in anything I feel like I, I was just studying all the time <laughs> that's amazing being able to keep up with the curriculum and being able to participate certainly that needs to enhance obviously your you know your resume and all the stuff I would say something to add too is um I at least personally I felt everybody asked me about my experience in the UK and I think that if you can, at least a semester, try it. I mean, for the students or for prospective students, I think it's a great opportunity. Get out, it's a whole different system. In every single of my interviews, they ask me about my experience in the UK. It just sets you apart, makes it different. I feel like they're curious to know what happens there. And then for, I really think my letter of recommendation in one of the hospitals that I rotated was very important. Um, I didn't match there. I went to UF as an undergrad and then I rotated there, but he was, he's pretty famous in the world of OBGYN and I didn't know and I got a letter from him. So I think that was very important. Like definitely like Dr. Iman said of going to where you want to eventually match, let them know you. I feel like the steps, how good you're doing the steps gives you an opportunity for an interview. Once you get the interview, letting them know you, you make them love you, and that's it, they wanna get you. And then how do you make it interesting in that interview is, you know, what have you done different? Like, why do they need to pick you? And I think that's usually how I think. Do well in the steps because that's how they're gonna compare you with the state. That, you need that. And then once you get the interview, you know, what can you bring in and make them feel that why you, you know? Such good advice. Thank you, Dr. Perez. And I agree. I mean, Mallory and Abigail, you guys do you guys do so much. It's like, when do you have time to study? How how is this happening? But that's that's amazing. I mean, the opportunities are endless. Um, we have another question. I, I like this one. Maybe um we can have Shelby talk and Jessica and Alexis as well. Is there anything you're pleasantly surprised to discover about the program or island that you can share? Honestly, when you're choosing the top tier schools in the Caribbean, you know, Ross, AUC, SGU, it was a pleasant discovery to me personally that AUC has much smaller cohorts than the other two schools. Like we're talking 150 to 250 students in comparison to 1500 or 1000. Like I always went to a private school my whole life and 
I didn't even know that it's not something that's really advertised in other schools like, oh, we have a thousand students per class. So for me, I was able to be involved in almost anything and everything because you have more opportunities, being that it's smaller schools. Um, also, you have opportunities to apply for scholarships. And although there's one student per semester that receives the two scholarships, imagine being part of thousands of students versus a few hundred. Like I was still able to acquire one of those scholarships because I did everything and anything to get to that point. So that was a really big surprise for me and a great thing just because I wanted to stick to that small environment. I wanted to know my peers. I wanted to know my professors. And I wanted to set that goal to be really involved. And that's really easy to accomplish when you're in AUC. Um, as per the island, um, I think that it's just paradise there. It's really beautiful. Um, it's probably one of the most well-developed islands in the Caribbean, so definitely a big plus. Well, I could speak on the UK track. So um, initially when I was applying, I wasn't aware of the UK track. And when I did my interview and I found out about the, the UK track, I think that's something that really stood out to me compared to other um, Caribbean schools. And um, what also stood out to me about doing the UK track was you also have the opportunity in your breaks, in your um, downtime to also travel to different parts of the UK, to different parts of Europe as well. That's definitely a plus for me. And um, going off of what Jessica said as well, again, because the UK track is relatively new, our class sizes are um, really small. Um, there's only 15 of us in my cohort currently. And I know um, as the years go by, the cohorts get larger, but it's still a very relatively small class size. So you, that, you have the opportunity to connect with your professors, connect with your classmates, and be involved a lot more than you would in a school where there's like Jessica said, thousands of people. Yeah, just echoing off of what both Jessica and Shelby said, I think the class sizes make a really big difference. Um, that's actually one of the biggest reasons why I chose AUC um, when I talked to admissions. Um, for me, a pleasant surprise was really like getting to know the faculty um and like learning where they've worked before and research that they've done and things like that like some of our professors we have one named Dr. Chavanya and she does brilliant like breast screening research and stuff like that here on the island and for the community and it just it was really shocking to me how much people care about the local community um and the extra work that they put in wonderful thank you for that we have one more question for maybe for either Dr. Mamian or Dr. Paredes. Um, best practices or advice to do moving through clinical sciences rotation? So Dr. Mamian, you wanna take this one away? Yeah, um, I think for moving is the question. <laughs> moving through clinical sciences. I think the best thing to do, um, it was nice to kind of stay in one place for at least a chunk of time, um, but it's good to move around as well and get experiences in different uh, hospital settings because they're all really so different. And then, um, I mean, I can't emphasize enough, try to rotate in the region that you wanna match in because that definitely matters in making those connections. Um, and then really like try to approach your faculty and your attendings um, early on and making sure that you get your letters of recommendation kind of all squared away so that you're not asking at the same time that, you know, um, hundreds of other medical students are asking. So I asked for my letters um, in advance and then and had them actually write it like in advance as well. And I think that was helpful because then they actually have an idea fresh in their head of ex examples and things that you did um, as a med student. So I think those are all my biggest pieces of advice. Wonderful. Thank you. And what about you, Dr. Paredes? Any input on best practices going through your rotations? Yes, I agree with what Dr. Imamian said. It's basically making yourself noticeable there, make, make yourself different. 
to the rest. Show that you're interested. Definitely the letter of recommendation, like I said, I feel like that was very critical for me. Um, again, you know, the rotations, I feel like going to the UK to me, you know, really maximize my experience those two years. I feel like, oh my gosh, I did so many hospitals, so many IDs in two years, <laughs> you know, like computer system that you learn and stuff like that. I think it's just make it diverse, make it different. Yes, and I know that Jessica, you're also in your third year. Your currently... connection you... was lost. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, Jessica, you were um, you're in your third year. You're in the thick of it. What can you tell us best practices um, that you're currently doing? Honestly, it is just giving it your all, showing the doctors that you care. Even if you really don't like that specialty, you still need to show that you're you're interested and you want to be there and you want to do whatever you can to make their life easier you are willing to learn like for example yesterday i i want to do er so i was able to get an emergency room segment as part of my internal medicine for four weeks so i set a goal yesterday like i want to learn how to place an iv so i placed an iv and then i and then it turned out that i was able to set a lot more goals and reach them like place an ng tube place a fully catheter, do EKGs, and like, it's just, the doctor's like, wow, that's very impressive. You're, you're here, you wanna learn, it, it shows that you're very interested, and you know, just being engaged in conversation and just verbalizing things that you see, like on an EKG, and showing that you, you have knowledge is what goes a long way when you're in re like rotation, because some students will wanna go home earlier, or be like, oh, can I leave? like a few hours into a shift, like this is a 12 hour shift and you're wanting to leave, it's not really, it doesn't look, reflect well on you. So just really trying your best and being interested. Wonderful, thank you, Jessica. I have another question coming in, um, maybe Mallory uh, or, or Abigail. Um, a student asks if TA is part of work study. You guys are TAs or were TAs in the past? Um, so I, I think it comes down to like what's paid versus what's unpaid. Um, course tutoring at AUC is, is a paid position, little, but it is paid, it counts for something. Um, if you peer tutor, that's a volunteer position. Um, if you are a TA in the simulation center of any variety, that's a, that's a paid position. And it, it's not necessarily a work study, it's just, literally a paycheck at the end of the semester direct deposited into your account. Um, however, if you're a histology or anatomy TA, it, it's a volunteer position. So there's there's some give and take there, but if if the financial aspect is something um, that you're that you're interested in, there are opportunities. SEA is is an amazing paid position, what we're what we're doing right now and why we're here speaking to you today, um, it's actually the highest paying position on campus. So if you're interested in connecting with with others, this is a great opportunity as well. I will say just a quick note for um, histology and anatomy being uh, generally a TA is volunteer. Um, if you choose to become a head TA, those are paid positions. Um, like Mallory said, not a whole lot, but a paycheck at the end of the semester for some hard work is uh, it's kind of gratifying. <laughs> Your flight home. I don't think it was when I was there. I was a TA. <laughs> I wasn't, so. Okay, thank you. So, Dr. Mamian, we have one question for you. I guess one of our students was a little bit surprised to hear that you were um, working, uh, doing your rotations while also um, participating in research all at the same time. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, I think I think we lost her. I could I could actually touch on that topic because I'm doing research while I'm in my third okay. year. Um, so honestly, it's really easy to acquire research when you're working in the hospitals because once you know how to build a case report and learn, um, you can look for those rare cases or like uncommon cases that happen. So 
when I was in my pediatric rotation a few like a month and a half ago, I came across a case of found a mutation that was just very rare. And I ended up looking into it and found out that it was only that it was only found in 2016. So it's like an extremely rare mutation. And I wrote up a case report on it. And there's always going to be opportunities like that where you could just collect information on patient, make sure you check with the IRB to make sure that the hospital's like rules and regulations are followed. But it's really easy to do case reports and research while you're working as a med student. And she's back. Thank you for asking that. I'm sorry, Jessica, you said something? Yes, Dr. Anna came back. I see her now. Okay, thank you. So um, thank you for answering that, Jessica. Um, and while we have you here, I know that we lost you for a little bit, Dr. Mamian, but one of our students was asking about the time where you were doing um, research and rotations all at the same time. Um, so I think she was surprised that you could do it all in one day. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think um, my research was primarily, I did some before like medical school, which I think was helpful. And then I wrote like some case reports um, in residency. I feel like my research in, in med school, I can't remember if I honestly did too much to be completely honest. Um, I did like a lot more advocacy and community work. And I think that was like the bulk of my application at the time I was applying. Um, so I did a lot of the different activities like peer mentorship um, on campus. I did um, like all the community action day stuff. There was an organization um, that worked with one of the orphanages on the island that I was also um, a part of as well. And then I did do some like clinical student government stuff, but I would say I was not, um, I didn't do too much research during my actual like medical school time. I did lots in residency though. I can, I can real quick too um on campus here we have like the research symposium once a semester and that's not um it's not often conducting research but we'll present unpublished cases um in kind of a big group setting and that's a really great intro to research too um but i know there are a couple like water quality and a couple other research projects that are going on on the st martin campus right now too Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities no matter where you go. Um, I have at least 15 research papers already published, so the opportunities are endless. And I'm actually a vice president of a research writing publication organization now that I just started with one of the former professors. So the opportunities are always there if that's something that you're interested in. And it does allow you to stand out when you get to residency if you've done research. So it's a great opportunity. For sure. Well, we have time for one more question. Maybe actually any of you can answer this one. Maybe we can start with Dr. Paredes. Um, what is your favorite thing about AUC? Oh no, that's too hard. I cannot answer that question. <laughs> it's everything. I loved everything about AUC. The opportunity, the fact that it's in an island that is a beautiful island. It's a tourist island where people pay there to go on vacation. You're there to study. Um, the preparation you get, I think, is the best. Obviously, I'm biased. I went there, so that's what I'm going to say. Um, all the opportunities, the quality that it just keeps getting better and better. Um, I loved everything. That's amazing. You had a great experience. Uh, it goes to this goes to it goes to show definitely. Anybody else? Mallory, Abigail. 
Yeah, I've had a really amazing experience here as well. I kind of stepped foot onto the island wanting to be a sponge for my entire time here and just to soak up as much as I can, give back to the community as much as I can. And I've really appreciated how much autonomy AUC and the faculty has, has given us in that regard. Um, we work very closely and collaborate with our faculty to provide these extra um, pieces of our curriculum, whether that be the simulation center or tutoring or whatever that is, you're really an active participant in not only your own learning, but the learning of your peers. And, and that's meaningful. And it's it's a great experience um, throughout your time on the island. So I've, I've really appreciated that. And it's like a family here. I mean, we're such a, a small community. So you can't walk in anywhere where you don't know anybody. If you're looking for anonymity, that's, that's not the place. But it is nice to have a tribe when you're going through a, a stressful, you know, couple of two years um, through your medical sciences training. And I'm sure it will be the same when we transition to clinical sciences as well. I'm just yeah, going to add to that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go I for it. Okay, I was just going to add, like, I think the friends that I made at AUC, um, some of them are my best friends still today. And it's been years since I graduated, I think like five years now. Um, truly, I think it like fosters an environment that's not very competitive. I was very worried about that going to a Caribbean medical school. Um, but I feel like there's so many different ways to really help each other out in the peer mentorship um, aspect to that, how, you know, students TA, like all these amazing things that you guys are doing. Um, I think it's just so nice to support one another and it really does kind of foster friendships um, that I think, you know, will last a lifetime. And I think that makes our school very special and unique. And sorry, Abigail, you can go ahead. Oh. That is totally fine. Um, I was just going to, you know, obviously I reiterate everything that other people have said, but um, I think my absolute favorite thing for AUC would be outside of the classroom, just all of the extra opportunities that we've kind of touched on. Um, we have like 42 or some odd number of interest groups that you can be a part of that is not only specialty wise, but also different religious groups or um, intramural sports or um, a group that likes to go out and scuba dive. Um, and then, you know, all of the community outreach programs, community action day, project help, where you go and give screenings to different local groups. And those sorts of things I think have made kind of the most impact on me as a person. I think I'm going to take the most, um, obviously the classroom knowledge is the most important thing. I'll be taking the most out of that. But um, in addition to that, just those extra experiences that not everywhere is going to give you, I think um, is one of one of my favorite things about my time here at AUC, so. Amazing, well, thank you all for sharing a little bit about your experience. This concludes our webinar. And as a reminder, we are still accepting applications for our May 2023 term, which begins May 8th. And the deadline is April 17th. So we encourage you to submit an application as soon as possible. Um, a special thank you to our amazing student panel, as well as Dr. Paredes and Dr. Mamian for taking the time to be here today. We know that you are extremely busy, have extremely busy schedules, so we do appreciate you sharing this past hour with us. And if you have any admissions-related questions, feel free to reach out to either myself or Indira, oh, I'm sorry, not Indira, uh, Felicia. Our contact information is on the screen. Other than that, thank you all so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, nice to meet you all. Keep up the great work.